Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to demonstrate how to paint Monstera leaves on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. So we have a kind of a simplistic tropical design and I'm going to go over colors and brushes. These are Liquitex Basics paints, Titanium White, Mars Black, Quinacridone Magenta, Thalo Green, light green permanent, bright aqua green, phthalo blue. So those two colors I use for the butterfly. If you don't wanna do the butterfly, you don't have to use those blue colors or you can change the colors. And cad yellow medium. You can also change the color of the background of this painting as well. I used four different brushes for this painting. I used a three quarter inch flat wash brush that was used for the background. A 12 bright brush I used for some of the shiny detail work on the leaves. I used a number four round brush and I used a number eight round brush. So this brush was really helpful because of the fine tip to it. I was able to get in and do some of the detail work on the tips of the leaves. If you're doing the drawing portion with me, you'll need a pencil, eraser, and a green Posca paint pen. So this paint pen I recommend using for outlining the leaves after we draw them. There's also an optional traceable template. I'm going to start with my 11 by 14 inch canvas in vertical mode and I have titanium white and quinacridone magenta on my palette. This is the three quarter inch flat wash brush and I loaded that into the water, kind of tapped it dry, but used some of the water on the brush to kind of distribute between the paint colors. So this is an abstract background of two colors that blend together, very simple type of background that we can use to fill our blank white canvas up. Um, so we're going to paint the entire thing knowing that a lot of the leaves will be covering much of this background but that's okay because acrylic paint the colors we'll be using are opaque enough they'll show um, you won't see any of that pink still showing through. So we're going to do all up and down strokes all over the canvas and I'm working on one of those flat panel type of canvases. So I find with these that you have to actually work a little bit harder to get that paint to spread and blend versus the ones that are stretched over a frame. Those are a little bit easier because the paint seems to kind of glide easier. So with this one, if I'm working on these, I tend to like grab a little bit of extra water on my brush, not too much, but a little bit of extra water helps to spread that paint a little bit better. So I'm basically going to cover this entire canvas using this technique. Um, you want to try not to over blend your colors. You want to make sure your strokes are going all the way across the canvas. It's okay if you kind of stop in the middle, but you pretty much need to do all up and down strokes everywhere. You can vary your darkness and lightness by adding more of the pink, more of the white. And because our white is blending with our magenta on the canvas, it's creating that really pretty hot pink color. I am going to go silent for the rest of this while I finish up this background. And the video is also going to speed up a little bit. Press pause if you need to.
After you're done painting the background, you will need to let this dry and we are going to do the drawing portion next. So there is a traceable for this if you want to use the template. If you're drawing this with me, Monstera leaves are very simple and we're going to start with this larger leaf. Let's start in the upper left part of the canvas and just draw a line. And this is the line that goes right down the middle of the leaf. And then we're going to draw this sort of inverted curve on the bottom of the leaf that attaches to the stem. And we're going to curve this up, around, and it's going to go to a point and around, almost like a big heart shape, an upside down heart. So you want to draw, you can draw pretty hard with your pencil if you wanted to. I'm actually going to outline this drawing with a, a green paint pen when I'm done with this. I'm just going to make this a little bit darker so it can show up a little bit better on the camera. So it's like this big upside down heart, very large leaf. And you're welcome to change the composition of these leaves. You can make them go in different directions or different sizes. Then we can do our second leaf. So this one's going to start with that line. It's going to cross the other stem. Do that inverted sort of curved shape at the base of the stem. And then we're going to form it into this elongated sort of heart shape. But the point of this one, the tip of it, goes off the canvas so we don't see the tip of that one. So this one's a little bit more narrow. This one over here on the left is going to be dipping backwards. So I did another stem line that overlaps that stem. And the heart shape, that one goes off the edge of the canvas as well. I'm going to adjust this curve part to be a little bit more inwards. And then we're going to turn these leaves into the more tropical monster type of leaves. So each of these leaves, ha they have these like little notches on the side. So I'm just going to take my shape that's already there and draw this curved sort of notch shape on the inside. And I'm just going to keep adding one on the inside so it kind of curves down and then that point of the leaf is in line with that the, the shape that we drew initially that heart shape I'm just going to keep adding this on the inside edges and you can do your best to try to make it symmetrical so same on both sides but it doesn't have to be symmetrical and then you want to go ahead and erase that line that's left so that we just have the little notches that are open. So I'm going back and erasing all of those and we have our Monstera style leaf. Then I'm going to go ahead and repeat that to these leaves. So this one, same thing, a little notch that goes to a point and that point goes along that first line that we drew. So each of the notches and we will go ahead and do this to this leaf as well. So curve goes down, curves down and then it goes to a point. It goes along that initial shape that we drew. And then I'm going to outline my leaves with this green Posca paint pen. So this is going to help with the painting process. And let's just simply start with that middle line. And then we can outline the remainder of the leaf, just how we drew it.
and then on to our second leaf. And then our third leaf. If you're using the tracer template for this, you'll notice that the leaves already have the holes on them. Um, I actually forgot to draw the holes here, but if you want to draw the holes now, you can kind of skip ahead in the video to see how I did it, or you can just go along with the same process that I did. I ended up drawing the holes for two of them and then painting around the holes. And then one of them I ended up painting pink holes after painting the leaf green. So both of those ways actually worked well. And then let's go and paint our leaves next. I'm gonna load my palette with some different green colors. So I have titanium white, which will be used for kind of blending, mixing different kinds of greens on the palette. We have light green permanent. We have phthalo green. If you don't wanna use phthalo green, you can use any kind of dark green that you have available. And cadmium yellow, medium hue. This yellow made some of the greens look really nice, give them, gave them kind of a pretty yellowish tint to them. So four different colors on the palette. And kind of the technique that we're going to be doing is something where I'm gonna be doing it, but yours might look different from mine depending on how you mix your colors and how they're blending. We're gonna use those four colors that we have on our palette to just kind of let them blend and do their thing on the canvas. This is a super relaxing sort of zen moment because you really don't have to think too hard about what you're doing because there's really no wrong way to mess this up. But I'll show you how I did it and yours might look different and that's okay. This is the number eight round brush and I'm starting with just the phthalo green. I'm gonna start by making my first layer of my leaf dark so that I can add some lighter colors over it. And I kind of recommend you do the same. Um, but if you wanted to add, mix some of the other greens into your dark green at this point, that is definitely fine. So this is the eight round brush. And the nice thing about this brush is that the point, the tip of it is thin. So I can get into those points on the edges of the, the pointed part of the leaves. And then I can get in and do thicker strokes in that same stroke. So I can start out thin and then I can do thick. So I'm doing kind of the edges of the leaf first. This is very similar to my fall leaf tutorial. If you've done that one, it's where we used different colors in our leaves, kind of the same technique, and we just let them blend on the canvas together. So that's kind of what I'm doing with the colors that are on my palette here. I'm grabbing that yellow and I'm letting that yellow sort of blend with the phthalo green and we have different variations of our green. And these strokes, the direction of the strokes, just kind of contour and go in the shape of the leaf. So if I'm working in the middle of the leaf, I'm doing kind of longer strokes. But if I'm working on the edge of the leaf, I'm doing strokes that are contouring and curving with that shape. And as I go to reload the brush, I will grab different amounts of yellow and that phthalo green. And again, if you wanted to use your bright aqua green, or not your bright aqua green, your light green permanent color, the other green on our palette, you're welcome to use that one. Um, try not to use any white at this point. We're gonna add white in a second layer on this to help make our leaf look shiny. So for now, we're just using the dark green, light green, and yellow. I'm going to go silent for a little bit while I finish this step of blending these greens and yellows together on the leaf to form one solid coat. Try not to let any of that pink still show through so it should be enough to cover all of that background, but if there's still a little bit of pink showing through, that's okay.
Next, I'm going to set that brush down and grab my number 12 bright brush, and I'm going to paint the center line of this leaf. Let's load our brush in the light green permanent and titanium white, so about equal parts. So mix green and white together. It's going to make a light sort of creamy green and use the tip of the brush to paint that line down the middle. You want to do a very kind of thin light line and try not to press too hard. And then you can either wipe your brush off on a paper towel or wipe it off on the palette, but you only want to load a little bit of paint on your brush for this step. And we're just going to almost like dry brush style. So we're doing these kind of curved strokes that go in the direction of that leaf shape and that white is adding sort of a, a thin layer over our dark layer that's creating this kind of shiny look to the leaf. So you're barely letting that brush kind of skid the surface of that to create that very light layer over your dark layer. So if you press too hard, it's gonna to be too bright. But that's okay, you can make some areas that are actually a little bit brighter than other areas. We're not covering all of the dark, we're just adding kind of that shiny dry brush layer over it with our green and white. I talked about the holes earlier, so I'm gonna go and draw these in. These are what I wanted to draw in earlier, but had forgotten. But the holes are really simple. Um, you can look at images of real monstera leaves and kind of observe what the different, like what they look like. The, some of the holes are more circular, some are more elongated oval-like, so you can create a variety of them. And they just kind of scatter throughout the plant like Swiss cheese. And so that one had several circles and a few different ovals. You can do more or less. So the one that we painted in, um, it's not too late to add holes because all we have to do is just get pink and we can paint our pink holes over the green and it's gonna make it look like, because it's the same color as the background, it's gonna make it look like that one has holes in it as well. So you can do it that way, um, or you can draw your holes and then paint around them. So both ways ended up working just fine. And then I'm gonna go and paint my next leaf. So it doesn't matter what order you go in as far as the leaves. If you want to do the big one next, you, you can. I'm going to do the smaller one on the left next. And it's the same exact technique. We're just using a different blend of our different greens. And with this brush, I'm able to do thinner strokes. This leaf, this particular leaf, I actually ended up introducing white into it first, even though the other one started out dark. But this one, I decided that it'd be okay to add some white in there. So it's kind of a brighter leaf. But if you paint it and you want it to, if you want to add darker colors later, you, you can. So you're just kind of doing the same thing, only we're painting around the holes that we painted and then you're blending your colors to create a variety of different types of greens in your leaf. You might find that your colors are all mixing together to the same color on your palette, so you may have to go and reload and kind of freshen that up a little bit. So I added some more phthalo green onto my palette so I can introduce this darker, really pretty dark bluish green color and I'll blend that in with our lighter green that we started out with. So I'm going to go silent again and just kind of zen out to this leaf as well, letting the colors just kind of blend and go around and do their own thing. And then when we're done with that layer, we can do our little dry brush technique. So I have a paper towel here that I can use to wipe my brush off because with this technique, you do not need a lot of paint on your brush. 
only a little bit on the tip of your brush is needed for this and you're just doing these quick very thin strokes and it's barely skidding the canvas and it's creating that sort of shiny look on the leaf And then we can do our line down the center of the leaf with the green and white combination using just the tip of the brush. And then I'm going to add some, of, some more of those shiny dry brush sort of strokes. And then next I'm going to kind of switch gears here and go back to my pink so that I can paint holes on my first leaf that didn't get any holes. I'm going to rinse these brushes off and reload my palette with the same colors that were used in the background. So quinacridone magenta, and there's already titanium white on my palette. And I'm going to use the number four round brush for this. So this brush is a little bit smaller than my eight round, a little bit more easier to control so I can make these smaller circles. I'm just gonna do like this oval inside of the leaf, another kind of stretched oval shape and then like a circle so you can just kind of vary that and so that's how you create the holes so if you like that way better than painting around your circles you can do it that way or you can do whichever way you like the best but both of them turn out almost identical then we're going to paint this big leaf next same exact technique, same colors, same brush, so the number eight round brush. You can reload your palette with colors if they're all meshed together at this point. Um, if you wanted to, this doesn't make like a huge difference, but I'm using the tip of this brush to actually kind of outline not both sides, but one side of the hole with the darker color, that darker green. I'm just using the tip and outlining one side you can do that too. Another little detail you can add to your leaf or leaves. And I'll do the same thing to this leaf. Just on one side of each of your oval shapes. And then we can start painting this big leaf in. I'll start with my darker color and do my bottom curve here. Um, with this bigger leaf we can add just a little bit of water on the brush helps boost that and gets it to flow a little bit better so you can cover those bigger areas a little bit faster. Ultimately it's the same exact technique so if you need to add more colors to your palette you can. Just go around the holes and then contour all your lines to fill in your leaf shape, blending them together on the canvas. Grabbing a little bit of white here so we can kind of alter the color right here to make that a little bit lighter and then blends in with the rest. And then I'm going to add more phthalo green and the yellow onto my palette and use both of those colors to help blend in some more variations of color. So this yellow right here, really pretty yellow. It just blends in with the rest of the green. And then darker color up here. I am going to go silent again for a bit while I finish up this big leaf. Ultimately, we're just blending different variations of green together in contouring strokes.
Next, I'm going to rinse and grab our 12 bright brush and do the middle line as well as the dry brush strokes on this large leaf. So with that, we load just a little bit of the white and green so it's lighter using the full width of the brush. I'm just kind of lightly doing these curved strokes from the center of the leaf, curving it outwards towards the edge of the leaf. And it's going in the direction of each of the sort of leaf prongs. Could even grab a little bit of yellow with that kind of dry brush white that we're doing. Again, full width strokes going in a curved direction. And then we can do our center line with the white and the green. So using the tip of the brush, I'm going to start at the tip of the leaf and then drag that down to the actual stem. And then we can start doing the little veins on the leaf. So with this, I'm going to just kind of simplify this, but we'll use the, the tip of this brush. So if it's easier to use the round brush for this, you can use the round brush, but I'm going from that center line and just kind of um, dragging each line sort of outwards in the direction of the little leaf prongs. You want to make sure that the color you're doing the veins with is contrasting enough. So if your leaf is super dark, you'll want to use a lighter color like the white and yellow combination. Or if it is super light for some reason, you can always do darker veins instead of lighter ones. So I'm going to do this one to the big one. So using the tip of the brush, just kind of curving and dragging outwards from that center line. Just using the tip of the brush. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing to our leaf down here, dragging each of those lines outwards, using some of that color to kind of dry brush on the bottom of some of those leaves. The next detail I'm going to do is optional, but I decided to darken some areas of the leaves using the 12 bright brush. So this is just the phthalo green right here, and then I'm going to touch up the edges with the bright brush and just kind of drag that dark green inwards. So the paint on here is dry. It's not blending with those paint colors on there, but it is adding kind of a darker layer and I'm going to do that on the edges of the leaves. 
So just outlining the edges, make sure that the shape is nice and defined and just kind of dragging that darker color inwards. Same thing right here, a little bit of outlining and just kind of dragging it inwards. And then I'm gonna do some of the edging on this leaf. Next, I'm going to do some of the outlining of the holes. So I did this earlier, but I didn't do that to all the holes. So this one, taking that dark color and outlining just the top part or just one side of the shape, the oval shape, so just the one side. This is the number four round brush and the phthalo green, so that really dark green. And then we can go back with our lighter colors, so that green, that white mixed with the green, and do the bottom part of the shapes, or so the other side of each of the shapes, the holes. So that one part is lighter, one part is darker. And then I'm gonna paint over the stem. So we drew that earlier with a paint pen, but we never really actually painted it with the acrylic paint. Um, but I'm gonna make it, give it a little bit more thickness. So this is the green mixed with a little bit of white. So starting at the end of that stem where it attaches to the leaf, I'm making that just slightly thicker. And then it's curving down. So it has a little bit more thickness, but it's a little bit thicker right there where it attaches to the leaf. And you can kind of vary that color so some of it's lighter, some of it appears darker. This last step is optional, but I decided to add a butterfly in the upper right area to kind of fill this space and add something unique up here. Um, so I'm gonna just kind of lightly draw my butterfly, starting with center, head, and wings. I know this is kind of hard to see on the camera with the pencil. There is a little how to draw a simple butterfly um, picture tutorial on the website, the instructions for this painting. So you can look at that as kind of a reference. I'm just doing a very simple, like my wings, kind of extend them upwards a little bit, antennae. Make it 
symmetrical as possible, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm using bright aqua green and I'll use thalo blue for this butterfly. You're welcome to change the colors on this if you wanted to do a monarch butterfly with orange. You could do it that way. So this is Mars Black that I loaded onto my palette and I'm using the number four round brush. I'm going to start in the center of the butterfly. Just paint his little head and body. Goes to a point, a little bit curved um, towards the middle and then rinse the black off. So I'm going to do a blend of turquoise in the center part of the wings. So in the inward inner part of the wings, just taking that turquoise and just kind of dragging it diagonally outwards to form the shape of the wing. And then without rinsing my brush, grabbing a little bit of the phthalo blue and I'm just going to kind of outline the outer parts of the wings and drag it inwards. Thalo blue and bright aqua green blend very nicely together, um, but you only need a little bit of that thalo blue to get it to blend because it's a stronger color. So I'm just dragging that inwards towards the thalo blue or towards the bright aqua green. We could always go back and add more bright aqua green on the inner part again. So I'm going to do this to all four of the wings. Just dragging each of the strokes downwards. Then I'm going to take more of my aqua and drag that from the center part outwards and that's going to help the aqua blend more with our dark blue. And next I'm loading just a teeny tiny bit of titanium white on my palette and without rinsing the brush. So I have aqua on my brush and titanium white. So I'm just using that white right there at the base of that wing where the aqua color is and just adding that little bit of white mixed with aqua in there will make that center part of the blue on the butterfly wings a little extra bright. Next, I am going to rinse and dry, grab my black, and do the border of the butterfly wings. So, do a thin stroke down here, but over here on the far edges of the wings, those are going to be thicker. So, thick stroke right here, and then thin stroke everywhere else. So it's like we're outlining the edges of the wings, but the far part, this part right here, is thicker. So that's curved and curved, thicker stroke, and then these are thinner. And then the antennae, just using this brush very lightly to create those thin strokes. If you have a paint pen, that works for that step. And then the last thing I'm going to do is add the little white dots over the black. So 
Ideally, let's wait for that black to dry, but it's not completely dry all the way, so I'm just gonna be careful with these. I'm doing titanium white, little black, or little white dots in the black border area. And then the one last thing I'm going to do is paint all of the little tiny veins on the butterfly wing. So again, black paint pen would be really helpful for this. I'm gonna try this with the eight round because it has a really fine point to it. So I have the black right there on my brush and I'm just gonna do these like little vein lines kind of going all different directions here. but mostly going outwards. So like one main line, it's almost like you're painting tree branches. That is basically it. This is the conclusion of how to paint monstera leaves. Hope you enjoyed this tropical vibe painting tutorial. Thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me.